So here we are. The final matchup of Group C. We have the Crimson Chickens versus Ursas. So uh, technically, this is the final matchup of the grouping stage. After this, we enter into the playoff stage of the tournament. And in a way, this is a playoff for both of these teams. Whoever wins this moves on to the playoffs. So it's going to be pretty intense, guys. An absolute dog fight. Uh, and we're back on this dreaded settlement. We've seen so much of it. So, yeah, we're back. All right, so let's talk about the teams here, what's going on, and we'll talk about the points and everything. So, uh, let's start with Ursos. They're on attack, and they're going with Pergamon and Colchis. And we were actually very surprised by this. Not by Pergamon. We've actually faced Pergamon two times already. So this is our third time facing the dreaded Pergamon. Uh, but they're a negative point, and then Colchis is a plus one point. So they're going to end up with three points if they are victorious, which is really surprising because they only need one point to get into the playoffs. So for them to pick a uh, such a high point uh, combination of factions was surprising to us. And we knew that if we didn't win this battle, they were going to gain a bunch of points, and it would be almost virtually impossible for us to try to win in the next battle now if we look at our team uh we're going as pontus and rdi now the strategy for us was to actually defend as pergamon because we've yet to play as pergamon and i even practice as pergamon but unfortunately they got to pick their uh, faction first so they beat us to pergamon so i went with the um the i don't know the cousin of pergamon the faction that plays very similar to pergamon they have a lot of, um, uh, they have a lot of, like, uh, Thoreau Spear type units, but they lack the swords, the, uh, the Glacian swords that Pergamon have, so I'm gonna have to rely on Hoplites, which is okay, because I think the, the sword killing potential is gonna be from Pontus here, uh, so Ruvac playing as Pontus, and yeah, if we win here, we only get one point, so we are kinda going with a higher point setup, because our plan is to um, get one point here. And then the next round, if we win, we are going to play as Sparta and Arverni. Uh, and that would have been, I think, four points. So that would have been the five points that we needed to get into the playoffs. So that is our mindset here. But guys, this is going to be a battle of Javis. Uh, because Pergamon and RDI, um, even Pontus and Colchis have J Javi capabilities. It's going to be an absolute just shred best now right now ruvac is moving up some troops some pontic swords he's getting them up on the walls to uh silence these glacian swords who are trying to uh burn this tower down and this might actually kill some of his men here whenever this tower oh no you got a second oh look it's at 99 percent. oh there you go so yeah we shredded this unit down to 80 men good job by ruvac Good use of Javis there, and he's going to get out of there because when this collapses, it does damage to the uh, the infantry. We do have some Cav in the back lines. So he's looking for an opportunity to strike. I'm not sure if they're aware of the Cav, but uh, it's set up pretty nicely there. Over on this side, they're burning down the gate, the, the towers here. No surprise. I guess we could have sallied out and tried to harass them a little bit, but we didn't really mind too much. Now the towers are moving forward. He's got some Axemen leading these towers. And they've got their infantry ready to ready to attack. Ready to go. So the Hillmen uh, are ready to go in. But uh, they have yet to commit. And I'm going to basically move up a lot of my troops once they do commit. So Ruvac's basically going to be the initial defense. Once, they, once they're holding back the enemy, I'm going to move forward and get my troops into position. The reason I'm kind of delaying here is because they have artillery, and I don't want to clump up too much of my troops uh, so he just shoots and, and kills the uh, the infantry. Uh, so that's, that's the mindset there. I have a lot of troops in the tree line here as well. Some jabbies ready to go, some some noble hoplites ready to fight. Here we go. Now I'm starting to move up the hoplites because I just noticed that they're uh, they're committing to the fight. And here we go. Crimson Chickens versus Airsauce for a chance to get into the playoffs for that number two seed in Group C. 
Here comes the charge. Mm. Boom. The Pontic Swords holding the initial stand here. And uh, now we got some archer fire. Again, big archer play here. We got the eastern archers getting hit by Colchis's uh, eastern archers as well. So we got a little eastern archer on eastern archer. Now we got more infantry coming in. And our goal here is to play staggered. We want to we want to have like opportunities to hit these guys on the flanks because that's that's our main strength, right? Is is projectiles. There we go. He's charging in another unit there. Great charge by Ruvak, silencing the Javis of the Galatian swords. Eastern Spearman. And now he's moving up uh, some hillmen as well. He was hitting my uh, my marines here a little bit, so I followed them back a little bit more. And then here comes Ruvak. He's moving up the Pontic swords, and he's going to get another charge off here. Great volley into the hillmen. And there goes the charge. He probably should have charged in with a smaller size like like that because he's really spread out and now the uh, Galatian swords are going to be able to pick off the guys on the end. Maybe he, he noticed that and that's why he's falling back. Now the fight's getting intense here. You can see Ruvak is starting to break. The hillman cannot hold against these Galatian swords much longer. I'm now moving up uh, some slave slingers. Because I noticed he's got his uh, scorpion here, which amazingly can hit enemies. I mean, this angle is like, yeah, totally, totally, you could aim and, and exactly hit. But sure enough, he saw, he, he noticed the uh, the movement of my slingers, and he falls back from them. But I'm just gonna leave the slingers there for a little while, just to zone out that scorpion. Here we go, more Pontic swords coming in. I've got uh, some of my hoplites holding back these hillmen. And look at this. This is exactly what we want to do. We want them to push far and expose their flanks. Now, a good move by Ursos using the Glacian swords. Just opening fire on these men. Yes, there we go. Good hits, good hits. We want them to commit to the fight. Commit to the fight. And we got archer fire coming down from the flank. Really good job. He's got his archers in the in what we call the market. And um, yeah, he's got a little bit of an angle. Because the thing about these Glacian swords is they're pretty weak against archer fire. So we're just trying to use the arrows to kill the weaker infantry. And then I'm going to use my javis uh, with, with the thorough spears and whatnot. The marines to uh to kill the more the the higher tier infantry because they'll drop as long as you hit them in the rear or the sword side or whatever all right so now he's using his hillman to kind of move up and silence these axemen that's archer fire coming down i've got my scorpion up here it's, uh, I only fired a little bit. I'm kind of waiting for him to get into a, a good position. Better position. More archer fire coming down. Look, he set up his troops here. Notice how he's moved up his troops. The reason for that is to keep the shields in front of the archers. He's moved, or the slingers, or, or the peltis. He's basically just making it more difficult. And now he's got his archers. This is actually a good move right here. He's got his archers, his eastern archers, opening fire on my slingers. It takes me like a second to see this. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so yeah, that's a good angle for him. Eventually I see it, I'm going to pull him off the walls. When I first, I actually saw it and I was like, oh, he's not going to kill too many. And then I saw a volley and I was like, oh gosh. Oh dang it, there we go. I get him out of there. And now he's gonna throw. <laughs> he just won't let these slingers go. And again, this is gonna be a skirmish battle, guys. Expect to see a lot of throwing here. Here we go. We got some Pontic swordsmen throwing some jabbies as well. I've got my uh, hoplites here holding this flank. I've got uh, some of my marines. Again, they act as similar to throw spears. Just kind of waiting for an opportunity. 
holding back my uh, my hoplites. Again, we're not forcing a fight here. We kind of want them to move in so we can use our javies and get some angles on them. Now he's going to charge the Pontic Swords here. There's really not much you can do with these guys. They're so depleted. He's just going to try to move in and silence these guys, but it's kind of hopeless there. Now these Glacian Swords getting chewed up. Very nice. All right, so now we've got some Thero Spears in position. So far, these guys have eight kills. I don't really have an angle too great to kind of fire on them yet. And then I've got more uh, more Marines over positioned here as well. Just looking for any kind of opportunity to, uh, to hit these guys. Now, when I first saw this, look at this. He's really using a lot of ammo on my hoplites. I honestly wasn't too concerned about this because I thought he was just using... He was he was just wasting a lot of ammo, but honestly, he is killing a lot here. But, you know, I guess I could have charged in. But that's all right. I was just going to soak up that ammo better than, than my Marines or my Archers. There we go. Now he charges in this infantry. So back here, he kind of puts a stop on the attack. It makes sense. The reason he's doing this is because if he does advance, his flank is going to be exposed from over here. He can get hit from over here. So they're going to focus their main attack over on this front. And here we go. Now we're starting to see some, some opportunities, some, uh, some windows of opportunity to throw our javies into the enemy infantry. I moved up uh, some of my uh, marines up here because he had some archers come up this way. So it's a good way to zone out the archers. Put your infantry up here. They can throw at the enemy. Here we go. So tough fight indeed. A hard fight. A hard fight indeed. Look at that. We are just throwing the hate. Throwing the hate. And I kind of got him sword side here a little bit. It's not great, but it's it's decent. Brought him down to 140. Again, they're still throwing against my hoplites. But, oh yeah. Very nice. 126 now. Oh my gosh. The skirmish. The bloody skirmish. So we're starting to break another unit. We got a Peltis unit coming in. Looks like they were thinking about moving forward, but they don't. I've got my Marines. I think these guys have used up all their ammo. They have 57 kills, which is not too bad. You, you usually want to try to get at least 60 kills from the, the Javis. I moved up these Thero Spears. They have only 23, and they're out of ammo. So I'm just going to put them in shield formation. They're going to hold the gaps. Actually, do these guys have ammo? I don't know what they're doing. Ah, uh, look at this. They're wasting some ammo on my marines. Actually, they're getting a lot of kills, so... But they are they are shooting shield side, like, right in front of the shield, so... I don't know. It's like, sometimes it's like, it's all you can do. Now they're gonna change targets and go for these Pontic Swordsmen, but... I mean, it's only... I don't know. This unit's at 55. It's not a huge loss there. There we go. So now I move up Marines to kind of reinforce this spot. And it's been a slow grind, guys. Well, not it's not been that slow, but it's been a uh, a big skirmish. And here we go. Cav moving in, moving in from Ruvac. And he actually gets some of the archers there. That was a huge play right there. He, he killed a lot of the Peltis, a lot of the skirmishers with this Cav. An absolute great play by Ruvac. Um, so well, well timed. I think you know he caught him, caught him with their pants down a little bit when they were focusing on the main fight over here. So good move on his part.
Now he's going to move in and finish up these Eastern Archers. So that was a huge, huge win right there. Anytime that you can destroy the enemy Archers is going to be pretty game-changing. That was, oh, it was good to see that. Because so far, this battle felt pretty even in terms of losses and kills. You know, it, it, there, there was no, it, so far, there's no been clear winner, clear decider of this fight. All right, so my Scorpion has now been shooting with 29 kills. His Marines, I think they've used up all their ammo. They have 92 kills. That's what I'm talking about. 92 kills, and they've yet to see any close combat. That's what makes these guys so nasty. Now we got Thoreau Spears from Ruvac, and he's opening fire in the flank of these Cardi, Cardi Axemen. There we go. Another victory right there. Pushing them back. Chopping away. How many kills does the Thero Spears have? 70. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. Man, you can rack up a lot of kills with a skirmisher. That's all this game is, is skirmishing. That's all it is, baby. That's all it is. All right. Illyrian Marines hanging back in reserve. We're doing a good job. This is a nice combination because... When they attack here, their flank is exposed from here. And when they attack this angle, their flank is exposed here. So it's kind of like a double angle we're kind of working with. Um, we're, gotcha. We've got some Peltus moving up. Um, I'm not sure why I'm falling back Get here. Warriors, I'm not sure what's going on. Gotcha. Oh, that's why. We're, okay, so re, we're reestablishing a new position. Because we want to create more of that flanking fire. That's what we want to do. Still, the enemy is not... Uh, or Ursus is not pushed forward here. Um, he's constantly hitting us with... Um, with this Ballista. He's getting... Or Scorpion. He's getting a lot of kills. 95 so far. Those Scorpions. It's tough, man. It's tough. Alright, here we go. So I assume he's going to try to abuse this gap here. He's going to take advantage of it. And there we go. Ruvac's going to go in and plug it. And with that exposed, I can take these men and face them towards the enemy infantry. That's what I'm going to do. What are you doing? There we go. Set up. And I'm going to hit these guys in the backs. Perfect. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, my unit here is starting to break, so they need to hurry up and exhaust their ammo so they can go into melee. <laughs> and look at that. He runs away. That's that's what you have to do. Got to hit them where they're, they're softest there. Already has 14 kills. Now 24 kills. This unit's throwing as well. Uh, kind of hitting the shields here a little bit. Not great, but at least we're hitting them a little bit on the flank. And now they push forward, and they're going to be even more exposed. Look at that. This kind of works out how they push forward like this, and we're going to hit them hard. These Marines have seven kills. Come on, you can get more than that. Oh, what? They're getting hit by archers? Ah, he set up some picked peltis. No, no, no. It's the archers firing like that. Oh, now, now there's an angle on the other side. Oh, but he's going to push in some infantry through the gap. Good play by Ursas. And we got some, some spears setting up as well. They're going to probably throw at us as well. My general is near the fight, constantly using his general abilities to keep the soldiers in the fight, in the struggle. There's a great battle going on at this flank. Over here, like I said, they've pushed up their infantry, and they're now engage engaging us up on the hill. I got some uh, slave javelin men throwing at the enemy, exchanging javies. But I don't think my slaves are any match for the picked hoplites. I'm going to go ahead and retreat these Javis because they're kind of losing the fight. Oh, 
Now, this is unfortunate. My scorpion decided to run all the way to this front for some reason. I have no idea why they did this. Why is this scorpion here right now? And unfortunately, I don't notice it till much later in the game. Um, so I thought the scorpion, I put him on guard mode and I thought that would have been enough to um, keep him there, but apparently not. I guess they were trying to get an angle on one of the units I was fighting. And unfortunately, my scorpion was not listening. I was better off just telling the scorpion to fire at will. And here we go. I try to get it out of there. But unfortunately, they break. That was huge. That was a huge loss and a bit of a mistake. Just because, you know, I, I don't know. I put them on guard mode. I wasn't really thinking about them. And I guess they had a mind of their own. And they went forward and went towards the enemy. So there's that. That was that sucks because the scorpion only got 29 kills. At least it got 29 kills, you know. I guess zero could be could be worse. All right, so now we got some thorough spears set up here. I'm trying to get an angle on this infantry that's starting to overwhelm Ruvax troops. There we go. We're hitting them decent there. Got 13 kills in that first volley. Just a big old skirmish. Come on, baby. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Balance of power is pretty even. It's going to be a close battle, guys, as you can tell. Starting to break him over here. This is good. This is very good. He's going to have to commit more infantry into this fight. Starting to break over here as well. Another good sign. He's got his spears set up. They're looking for a good angle. He's looking for a good angle. But we got to charge him so they don't hit us. Nice. I like how he kind of charged both units there. Nice use of the archer fire over here. Just firing over the buildings, trying to hit the flanks of these men. Nice. We're chipping away at their numbers. These throw spears have 68 kills. I think they just used up all their ammo. But, uh, yeah, I can't, can't complain with 68 kills. My general's still sitting in reserve, the noble hoplites. At this point, uh, you know, I do have some reserves here and there. I'm, I'm, at this point, we got to commit everything to the fight. This is it. Do or die. I've got some archers that broke and my javi crew that broke, but it's not like they're going to contribute much to the fight anyways. But every man matters at this point. Here we go. I'm holding back these... Uh, uh, Col uh, Colkian Noble, Koshian, whatever. His nobles. And you can just see how the bloodbath here. And there we go. Nice use of Javis here on the flank of these men. Who's that? These guys here? Yep. 27 kills from that one volley. Throwing hate down on these guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Woo! Chipping away at them, folks. Chipping away. They're at 50 kills now. That's what I'm talking about. Get those kills up. Got my slingers in position, and I just decided to go for the, uh, the general here. I'm just going to sling at the general, try to chip away, maybe get lucky and kill him. You know, if I still had my scorpion... I could be firing at this general with the scorpion. It's just a big bummer that that scorpion had to run up there in the front line. So maybe I shouldn't have been slinging at these guys because uh, after a couple volleys, I still have zero kills on them. <laughs> there we go. Form square up here, setting up reinforcements. Gonna form another square. Gotta maintain that front. We got some caps. So Ruvak has returned his cab into the settlement. He's going to help out. Got a little bit of a javi off. The slave javi versus their picked peltis. Which I'm losing this fight. But it, it, at least I'm getting him to waste his ammo on my javis instead of like my infantry. 
And I'm plugging this gap with a square formation. Oh, this is going to be close, folks. A photo finish. Here we go. Now the general's charging in. He's lost four men so far. But now that he's committing to the fight, I actually have an angle on his troops. And now we've got the general over here for Pergamon. My general has now been uh, thrown into the battle. We got a little bit of a cab charge from Ruvac. Getting those units. Protecting the flank. Oh, my Thorough Spears still have ammo. But they have to fight. Balance of power is still very close. I would say it's slightly in their favor. Archer fire opening up. We got this ballista. They've got to be low on ammo at this point. Nice little volley there. Very nice. 46 kills on these guys. I'm going for the flank here. I killed enough to where they break square formation. Nice, and they're breaking. Yes! But we're barely holding over here. Ruvex got his uh, general in reserve. There you have it, folks. There you have it. It's a close battle. We're down to the last 10 minutes. Who's going to take it? Oh, is this a push through? No, I'm just good. It's not. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're, they're in my square, which is interesting. I don't know who. It's probably better for my troops. I'm going to reestablish my general, reform them to have a better line. Rest them up there a little bit. There we go. He's going to charge me. That's exactly what I want. Now he's going to fire into Ruvac's general. He's going to fire back. <laughs> back over this way. It's a close struggle. I've got my, uh, my throw spears here with 82 kills. Most of those being th by throwing. And I'm just throwing at the flank here. This is a close fight over here. Ooh! Ooh! Now we got Ruvac charging in his general. He probably didn't need to charge in the general right there, but I think he's trying to quickly break these troops. Back over this way, we're fighting off uh, the general of these nobles. We have yet to kill a single one. Wow, that's impressive. These guys will just not die. We got some jabbies coming in from these throw spears from uh, Ruvac. 13 kills so far. Now I've got my spears in position here. They've used up all their ammo and they have 97 kills. So I'm going to charge them into the melee. Starting to break them. This is good. Good stuff. Now we got the general Pergamon coming over to this side. These throw spears... Aruvek still has a healthy unit of throw spears here. I think they've used up all their ammo, but he could get into the fight. Oh, this is close, folks. This is close. Here we go. Look at that. We're breaking more units. My general's holding. Bounce of power, though. Looks like it's even more in favor of the attackers, though. It's definitely going to be an uphill battle for Crimson Chickens. Gonna be an uphill battle. Uphill battle. There we go. He's charging in more troops. Look at this poor soul. What are you doing out of formation? That's what happens. Nice little volley from the throw of spears. Look at he was patient, waiting for an opportunity. Now we got the general changing, so they're swapping. 
And this is all we have here, holding this flank. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at this. Ruvac coming around the flank with Cav. He's going to go for these archers. Even though they're most likely out of ammo. No, they're not out of ammo. Oh, nice. Ruvac coming in clutch with the Cav. Look at him go. But it's a suicidal charge. He's just trying to do as much damage as possible. But now that he's caught by the general, it's going to be tough. And now we've got Ruvac throwing in his throw of spears. And this is where we're trying to uh, create a chain route. We're trying to completely take control of this area. And it's just down to a select few troops. But general's still alive with 89 men, 44 kills. They're not killing machines, but they're holding machines. They must hold. Balance of power is shifted now. Look at that. It's closer to even. It's closer to even. Now we got archers charging into melee. It's that stage of the battle where we got archers coming in. Now I've got my, uh, one of my, my spears. They're going to go this way. We found an opening in the flank, and I'm just going to ignore these archers. I'm just going to simply ignore them. Bye-bye. See ya, archers. I'm going to charge in. Yes. Flank. Flank their position. I just wanted to help out my general there a little bit. I'm going to regroup my, uh, my throw of spears. And now I'm going to hit the backs of the general with my throw of spears. Ah! Die. Noble scum. Make them bleed. Look at this. We've got the uh, general kind of outnumbered here by like quite a lot. And this is it, guys. It's down to the wire. Down to the wire. Who's going to take it? Bounce powers dead even. I got my slingers, a group of like, what is it, 30? Just opening fire. Trying to kill these men on the flank. Just trying to chip away at their numbers. I surrounded my uh, Thoreau Spears. I got them in square formation. Now we got the general of Aruvac reforming and coming over to support this side. Over here, we're trying to break the general, but the general just does not want to break. He's down to 98 men. There we go. We're charging in. We're trying to hit him on all sides. But again, he just won't break. He's fighting the good fight. Now not, now down to 94. That's glorious. Oh my gosh. Now the Thoros, they probably should have stayed in that battle to kill the general. But unfortunately, the general finishes up my infantry. And that is a tragic loss. Now, Ruvac's going for the clutch play with the Thoreau Spears. Going with the Thoreau Spears. Going to try to get behind some units here. We've got the brave artillery crew with 161 kills trying to slow down Ruvac. But he, he's, he will be allowed to run through them. There we go. He's going to charge these archers trying to finish them up quick. Guys, it's down to the wire. Last three minutes. Who's going to take it? My slingers are out of ammo, but they only got 25 kills. That's a real bummer. Noble hoplites. Pushing in. Trying to break these guys. If we can break this unit, we're going to be free to flank around and close in. I don't know how much longer my general can hold. He's down to 62 men and has 106 kills. He's holding that line. He's holding the line. His nobles, 283 kills. Unbelievable. Down to 69 men, giggity. There we go. Now they're charging in. The slave slingers. The slave slingers. I actually got my uh, scorpion crew back up here. So they survived. They ran through here, and then I ran them all the way th back through here to come up here. 
Uh, but the balance of power, as you can tell, is starting to uh, fade. More and more units are starting to break. And uh, unfortunately for the Crimson Chickens, this is where they die. Like I said, it was a do or die situation. Uh, we need some sort of amazing chain route to be able to pull this off. But unfortunately, it's not going to be possible. Ruvak doing the best he can to protect the rear here these units he's gonna kind of flank around look for an opportunity but uh yeah it's not really gonna come you know uh i <laughs> looking back at this i think the biggest mistake was my scorpion if i could just if i just got 50 kills with my scorpion i feel like this this could have been plausible i don't know uh there was very little mistakes done here uh but i feel like uh, of course you can always look back and see what you could have done better but this essentially is the nail in the coffin for our chances of getting into the playoffs. Because uh, now they have uh, 12 points, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. 12 points required. To uh, that's that's the so no longer is it 10, it's 12. So um, it. Yeah, we're going to need, like, an unbelievable amount of points in the next round on attack to be able to still make the playoffs. It's like, it's like, it's still possible, but it's not plausible. Got some archers here. Some javis. Going to try to get them back into the fight, but, yeah. It was a close fight, guys. It was a uh, hell of an ending. We gave them hell. We gave him hell, and, you know, I was, uh, you know, talking to Ruvac. Oh, by the way, um, let me let me just end this replay, show you the results. Uh, so you can see um, Ruvac did great there, getting a lot of kills. But, uh, you know, one thing that also sucked is I didn't practice with RDI. I practiced with Pergamon. And, like, them picking Pergamon right out of the gate, that was just like, oh, that sucks. You know, like, I didn't even know they had Pergamon. So... Every time we face Pergamon, we lose. Pergamon is such a good faction because of all those Thoreau Spears. So, uh, yes, uh, well, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm not going to really show the second battle because what we did to be able to win, we had to go as Adrissian Kingdom and Sparta. Uh, so the chances were going to be very slim. And we our plan there, I went as Adrissian Kingdom, but I spammed as many Hoplites as possible because... Um, you know, the Adrissian Kingdom is so weak to Archer Fire. And they were playing as Cimmeria or, or whatever, and they have very good archers. So that battle, it, it did not go well, especially when they sallied out. They killed their archers, and then it just turned into this long meat grinder that just was kind of pointless. So it wasn't the most exciting battle. We were trying to do something kind of unconventional to try to win. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I remember talking to Ruvac, um, right before this match, I said, Hey, whatever happens in this battle, uh, it's been a lot of fun, you know, just like to be in the struggle with, with Ruvac and getting better at the game. And we, we practiced the whole week before this match, uh, every day, uh, we revisited, we looked at footage well, I even streamed, if you guys remember, I streamed the practice that was all just like a ruse. We, sel we purposely selected factions that we weren't going to go as, and we purposely attacked the other side of the settlement to make it look like this was going to be our strategy. I don't know if the other team saw it, but that was pretty funny. Like, that was the big ruse, right, uh, of, of the plan of that stream. And I, I thought it was pretty funny. So we did everything in our power to win, and we still lost, so I can't even be mad about that because it's like we did – the best we could i think looking back there were some stupid mistakes i could have done better in this battle um which really sucks but uh it is what it is but anyways guys thank you so much for watching don't forget uh there's a link to the discord for this tournament there's also links to other uh youtubers who are covering the tournament i will probably cover some uh battles of the probably the uh semifinals and the finals i'll probably cover for the tournament at this point, I'm Team Gorilla Boys so they can represent Group C and hopefully win it all. 
Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.